and being more effective, which is really what, we, what we're all seeking. I do think that term limits is a silver bullet. I think if we enacted term limits, I think politicians would do the right thing as opposed to whatever it takes to get reelected. And I happen to believe that our $20 trillion debt has everything to do with the fact that politicians will spend their way to get reelected. That's really the main cause for all of that. So that's kind of, uh, that's kind of being fiscally conservative, uh, fiscally responsible. On the, on the uh, liberal side of uh, people being able to make choices in their own lives, look, um, I support marriage equality. I think that it's something that, that the Libertarian Party has been promoting since, in, since its inception in 1971. Can there be a more difficult issue in anyone's life uh, uh, other than abortion? And for the woman involved, that is a choice that just the woman involved should be making. And, and it, is, it is something that's a terribly difficult choice that the woman involved should be making that decision. I think that we should legalize marijuana. And I think that that's Let's end the drug war. We have... of Americans in this country who are convicted felons that but for a war on drugs would otherwise be tax-paying, law-abiding citizens. School choice, uh, the ability for people to make choice. Look, when you're socially liberal, always come down on the side of choice. Allow people to make decisions in their own lives as long as those decisions don't adversely affect others. So I think school choice is something that's uh, really would bring about incredible innovation uh, to education. But I'm looking to get elected president of the United States. Um, I think education needs to be, needs to occur at the most local of level. It needs to happen here in Pasadena. It needs to happen here in California, not dictated by the federal government. If I could wave a magic wand, I would abolish the Federal Department of Education. The federal... Yeah. Just... The dollars and cents that revolve around the Federal Department of Education. California gives the Federal Department of Education 13 cents, and then the Federal Department of Education sends back 11 cents. Wow, that's a, that's a, that's a great trade. Uh, and then the uh, 11 cents that they give back uh, actually comes with uh, mandates that you end up having to spend 15 cents to accomplish the 11 cents. So the federal government ends up dictating how education needs to occur in California. And I'm going to guess Californians have the best notion of how education should be conducted uh, in California. I um, philosophically agree with the death penalty. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. But as governor of New Mexico, what I came to recognize is, is that the government makes mistakes. And that mistake rate may be as high as 4%. So as public policy, the death penalty is absolutely flawed, uh, as with lists. So I am absolutely opposed to the death penalty because the government makes mistakes. So much right now is, is being um, focused now on guns and gun violence, and, and rightfully so. Look, we should, uh, we should be concerned about keeping guns out of the hands of the mentally ill. We should be concerned about how we keep guns out of the hands of terrorists. As President of the United States, I would love to understand frontline uh, what the FBI found out from having interviewed the shooter um, three times. And the fact that we somehow are connecting him with ISIS, uh, I think that that lends credibility to ISIS when we shouldn't be lending any credibility to ISIS at all. We should keep from growing those ranks. Military, military spending. Uh, the fact that we intervene in other countries' affairs, let's draw a difference between isolationist and non-intervention. Look, we should have diplomacy to the hilt. We should be engaged in free trade. That's how we bring peace to the world. 
This is about peace, bringing peace to the world, stopping with the military interventions. The unintended consequence of when you put boots on the ground, when you drop bombs, when you fly drones and kill thousands of innocent people, uh, this is resulting in a world less safe, not more safe. We need to engage Congress in a declaration of war in how we move forward, something that they've completely abdicated to the uh, executive and to the military. This is not what we should be doing. And with regard to ISIS, look, if we are attacked, we're going to attack back. We have to have an absolutely impenetrable national defense, but I stress the word defense given that so much of what we're doing right now is offense. We are intervening. It's having negative consequence, not positive consequence. And I think that the biggest threat... I think the biggest threat in the world right now is North Korea and the fact that at some point, uh, Kim is going to have uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles that actually work. And so how about joining arms with China in this, China recognizing that this is a big problem in the region. From a diplomatic standpoint, we should be joining hands with China to address this issue. We have 40,000 troops in South Korea. Could you imagine 40,000 Chinese troops in Central America and what we would be thinking about that? Well, we have 40,000 troops in uh, South Korea. There is no chance whatsoever that North Korea is going to invade South Korea conventionally. Uh, and if it is n nuclear, uh, we've got them covered with that umbrella. And I hate to think about that. But this is an issue that we should be joining hands with China to solve diplomacy uh, to the hilt. Brexit, uh, in the news right now, uh, I think that what the Brexit vote represents is Britain saying, look, they've had an end to the crony capitalism of the European Union. That, that the European Union has so many rules and regulations uh, and, and crony capitalism associated with it, that trade has stalled uh, in, in Great Britain, and it's really stalled in the European Union. Uh, I think there is going to be uncertainty in Europe for many years to come. I am talking now uh, about the uh, Euro. Uh, I think the United States in years to come is going to be a haven for money to flow into the United States. You saw, uh, you saw bond prices go up uh, significantly, so yields are dropping, but uh, I think the core 10 for the United States is good. Uh, the European Union is refusing to deal with entitlements. Uh, nothing is free. Somebody has to pay for it. And when it's you and I paying for something else that's free, is that free for us? Shouldn't we be making those decisions uh, as opposed to, to government making those decisions? Uh, this is the opening of uh, Politicon, uh, really wonderful opportunity for me to be able to come here and talk with you all. Uh, I think we're going to have some uh, questions, uh, comments, uh, insults perhaps, uh, <laughs> and maybe we can start with that. But thank you very much.